guys i'm not gonna lie to you the care home gives you value for every single time you spend when i was in the nhs i had to be chasing for my trainings but when i moved to the care home my trainings were chasing me it is the instructors that were coming to chitali emailing you calling you to come for this and this and this and that training things i have now i didn't have them it was in, when i got to the care home my carers in the care home are paid more than top band five nhs staff some are even paid as high as band six nhs nurses and sometimes i don't know how it happens but it's happening hi guys welcome back to my channel <laughs> hello and welcome again to my youtube channel if it is your first time i've come across my channel a very big welcome to you my name is becca i'm a migrant nurse from ghana west africa and i'm currently practicing and living in london and on this channel basically i talk about nursing i do lifestyle videos a little bit of me some fun and positive vibes here and there if you are a returning subscriber all i say is a very very big thank you for constantly supporting the channel if you are new to this channel it's not by accident that you've come across my video please kindly subscribe down below and turn on the post notification bell icon so that in future if i make any helpful videos you will be the first person to be notified and be able to watch in today's video i'm going to be talking about generally working in a care home what it feels like to work in a care home what are the benefits for you as a care home worker both for you as a nurse and this is because i have received loads of people asking me to talk about working in the nursing home and as a person who have transitioned from the nhs and taken the decision to work in a care home it means it's something that i have considered and something that i have thought about and i feel like i am the best person to tell you this so if this topic sounds of interest to you, you would like to go ahead and watch this video right on to the end. The things I'm going to be telling you in this video are things that nobody will tell you about the benefits of working in a nursing home or in a care home. So if you have worked in the NHS before, and I am saying this because in my previous video, I told you guys that when I was working in the NHS, I had the opportunity by the grace of God to work as an agency nurse in six different hospitals and NHS trust. And I was doing mostly acute medical, surgical, trauma and orthopedics and accident and emergency. So I got exposed to loads of scenarios, and loads of environments. So if you do not know what a care home is, a care home is a setting that is generally for care of elderly. So it is dedicated for care of elderly and for people with complex care needs or people with disability needs. So it is not everybody in the care home that doesn't have mental capacity or it is not everybody in the care home that suffers from dementia. This is one thing I have been hearing over and over. People are like, all of the residents in the care home have dementia. No, they do not have dementia. Some of them have mental capacity. They have mental lucidity. They are just in the nursing home because they have complex care needs that they will not be able to do on their own when they are at home. We also have what we call the respite care where people who have mental capacity and who can look after themselves at home are faced with temporary issues and they need somebody to look after them. Hence, they are moved into the nursing home for that brief phase or for that temporary period or for them to be looked after by a trained or skilled personnel. When you are working in the care home or in the nursing home, it is just like working in the acute medical ward or working in a geriatric ward in the NHS. I want to say this so that you have an idea of how the care home setting or how the care home environment is so in acute medical or in geriatric nursing wards in nhs you mostly have patients who are elderly who have dementia some are confused they have delirium and they are brought into the hospital for brief treatment most of these patients are patients that are from nursing homes so if you work in a geriatric ward or if you want to know how nursing homes are you can go to a geriatric ward in NHS or you can go to a geriatric ward in the hospital and then you have an idea of how the care home is. So without much ado, let me just go right into the video of telling you amazing and sweet benefits of working in the care home or in the nursing home that nobody has ever told you about. The number one thing is that you get to learn the health and regulations and laws pertaining to health. So there are some things like doors, MCAs, 
those things i didn't know or i didn't learn them in the nhs i just heard of them but it wasn't as detailed as i got to know when i was working in a care home so when you're working in a care home you are working with patients that are vulnerable patients that are high risk people and these people mostly their their care are governed by laws and regulations and so for you to qualify to work or look after them you need to learn the health regulations and the laws pertaining to their care so laws like the mental health act and things like that are gone into details with you because they want you to know the right things to do when you are working with patients with disability or patients with complex care needs or vulnerable patients, it makes you know the law. Generally, it makes you know the law governing health, mental capacity assessment, like things like DOS, Mental Health Act, and those things and those things. That in the NHS, they will not go into details with you because sometimes your job role doesn't entail you to know about these things. So by the time you work in a care home up to a point, you know a lot about the healthcare regulations and the laws pertaining to caring for people with disability or generally the laws governing healthcare. And research has shown that the nurses that work in the nursing home that transition to the NHS are very, very, very good nurses or they turn out to be brilliant nurses with excellent management roles. The next thing the care home offers that the NHS doesn't offer is value for your time guys i'm not gonna lie to you the care home gives you value for every single time you spend you know the care home salary is so much that sometimes you are like what is happening here the salary of a care home nurse who has not been promoted who is just a registered nurse is more sometimes it's more than a band eight nurse in the nhs i am saying this with no apologies because it is what it is it is what it is so as a registered nurse if a registered nurse in a care home is taking home forty eight thousand pounds per annum how much does a band eight nurse in the nhs take it is what it is. It's the honest truth. So the care home gives you value for your time in terms of finances. The next thing is flexibility. So flexibility in terms of you can decide which kind of shift you want to do. So at the beginning of the calendar month or at the beginning of the month, you can just pick your nurse in charge. I want this, this, this day off. I want this, this, this day on. I want to do night. I want to do weekends. That is if you are not a permanent night nurse. So like for me, I'm a permanent night nurse and... There are some days I'll tell you on this particular day, I don't want to work. And so I have the flexibility of getting the work and life balance. If you are um, a family or if you are a couple, most of the time they take your partner's, you know, schedule or your partner's timetable. And then they use that to frame you so that you would have the chance or opportunity to schedule in between the two of you. Especially if you have children, you can also have time to look after your children. Working in a care home sharpens your management skills. Okay. So most of the times you are charging I wouldn't say most of the times, like all of the times, like 90% of the times, you are the one charging your shift. So even if the manager is around or even if the nurse in charge is around, you are responsible for a portion in the home that you are the one looking after. So based on that, you take your decisions alone, like not like alone, alone, but you are given that autonomy to make decisions that are of interest to the patient or to the resident or that are in best interest to the resident so based on this you sharpen your managerial skills you know how to manage a team of carers because most of the times you are the one leading the carers though they have their, their head of care but all the responsibility falls back onto you so as you are leading them showing them what to do telling them what not to do it sharpens your managerial skills in the long run good written english i never knew that a care home in the care home you write a lot as a registered nurse you write a lot of care plans you do a lot of risk assessment you do a lot of auditing that all comes with written english and so at the end of the day you have control over your written english you have good control over your written english skills and sometimes i feel like I can write a book. I can easily write a book because you are writing a care plan that is very detailed and that is spelling out the entire life of somebody. And you are writing this care plan in such a way that when somebody reads this care plan, he sees a reflection of this person you are talking about in your writing. So let's say, for instance, I'm in a care home, I'm a resident of a care home, and a nurse is supposed to write my care plan. The nurse is writing my care plan based on a reflection of who I am. So she needs to know everything about me 
and write it in such a way that if somebody that doesn't know me comes to read about this care plan, this person feels like they've known me all the days of my life and with time with writing these care plans from time to time you have a good control over your written english perks monies responsibility bonuses and allowances you know what depending on the care group company that you've joined there are lots of monetary benefits that you gain from working in the private care home if you don't know what kind of care homes you need to join i have done a very helpful videos of spelling out 10 top nursing care homes or 10 top care homes in the uk that you should join because these care homes are bigger companies that have loads of branches and so when you join them they have a lot 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 of uh benefit that you can join from so some of these perks are like when cqc come to do an inspection of a home okay and then the home has an outstanding cqc the company can say that based on you having an outstanding CQC, we can give each member of staff £500 as a gift voucher. A, a CQC rating of good, we can give each member of staff 100% a, a gift voucher or shopping voucher. If at the end of the year, the company makes profit, they can decide that we are going to share the profit amongst members of staff. And that is what we call the profit sharing scheme. So based on your inputs, based on the number of hours you've worked, they can give you a minimum of like £700 in addition to your salary. Some of these companies pay for your NMC uh, PIN renewal every year. So you do not need to think of renewing your PIN or going to pay for your PIN. Some give you higher holiday pay. So when you go on annual leave, the pay they give you is not the same as the pay they give you when you are working regular. It's just an incentive for you to kind of like be having regular holidays to look after your mental health, to look after yourself and to come back refreshed to work. However, if you don't want to go on holidays and you want to work within your holidays, you can sell your holidays and you are paid more or sometimes times two or times three of your regular salary whilst you are working when you are supposed to be on your holiday. Sometimes also they give what, what is called the responsibility bonuses. So sometimes there are some responsibilities that you take up that let's say the clinical lead or the nursing charge is supposed to come to work and they do not come and you end up charging the unit. That is a responsibility that's not in your domain. They give you an allowance or a bonus for taking up that responsibility. And if you are the clinical lead proper or you are the nursing charge proper or you are the manager proper, you also have your allowances that you receive outside of your salary. I don't know how many people believe that nursing shouldn't be financially rewarding. Nursing can be financially rewarding it depends on where you decide to work. Care home gives you a good interpersonal relationship. So in the NHS, you know that our patients come and it's an acute care setting. They come, they get well, they go home. But in the care home, we refer to these patients as residents because they are in their comfort of their home and you are looking after them. Some people have been in the care home for 15 years, 20 years as residents. And so working with these people or looking after these people, it helps you form a bond between them and their families because you develop that kind of interpersonal relationship. At a point, you can talk to them. They can tell you everything about their life. Their family becomes a part of you or you become like a part of their family. You become like a member of their family, actually. I know of a lady who is a black who came to the UK. She's a migrant, obviously. So she came to the UK to work and then when she came, she was working in the care home and later she moved to do the living carer. So the, the family or the couple she was looking after were elderly couple that didn't have a child. She built a very strong interpersonal relationship with this couple to the extent that this couple didn't have a child and so they didn't have grandchildren. And so in the process, they because she was taking them out, sometimes they got to know her family as well. So they got to know her kids. She had two kids. And so her kids, the couple decided to be inviting the kids from time to time to come to them to play with them because they didn't have anybody like around the home. So the ladies' kids were basically coming to this couple's home to play with them, to look after them. When it was time for them to die or when they were nearing their death, when they were very old and they realized that they didn't have much days to live, they first adopted the children of the lady as their official grandchildren so they did adoption papers and everything and adopted the children and they willed 50 percent of their property to the lady and her family because of the children and they gave the other 50 percent to charity so i'm not saying 
you should be going into the care home just because of this but i'm just trying to explain that sometimes the relationship can go beyond work it can be so personal and interpersonal and sometimes you enjoy some added benefits or added advantages as working in the care home. relaxed work environment so in the care home is not an acute care setting although sometimes patients can be on oxygen they can have tracheostomies and stuff like that but they are not people that are sick sick because like 80 percent of the times they are not sick they are just there to live their lives and so you are not on the edge of you know like jumping about and doing iv medications and mind you in a care home we don't do iv medications most of the care homes don't do iv medications so you have this kind of relaxed work environment where you can sit to talk to your patients because in the nhs you don't have that much time you are doing too many things at a time but in the care home sometimes you can spend like five minutes ten minutes you go to your resident you sit to talk to them you hold conversations with them and it's a relaxed atmosphere it's a chance for you to also relax yourself as a worker you don't feel like you are always on the move or you are always on the go to you know to deliver it's vast learning some of these trainings can sharpen you into becoming like a manager, a deputy manager, a clinical lead, a nurse in charge. You can even get, sometimes you get the opportunity to go and further your education. You can do, be an oncology nurse, you can be an advanced nurse practitioner, you can be a stomach nurse, you can be a TVN based on the experience or the exposure they give you and all of these trainings are free so when you go to the care homes um intranet they have these trainings for free you log in with your details and you have access to vast learning pools that are all for free that can help you you know grow as a person progress professionally if you want to become a care home manager a care home manager ends like between 60,000 quid and 80,000 quid and i don't think there is any band eightness in the nhs that ends that no they don't they don't they don't so you are a manager you are progressing and you still have that financial freedom that you want to have good communication skills because most of the times you are leading the unit or you are charging the units you are communicating with your carers you are communicating with your colleagues you are communicating with multidisciplinary team like the in and out of hours gps you're communicating with the ambulance queue especially if your resident is sick and you have to call for them to come you're communicating with them you are communicating with uh the salt the tv and the therapist the resident and their families so as you are speaking with these people you know how to speak with them you know how to speak with your relatives you know how to speak with the resident you build this kind of trust kind of bonding kind of friendship with them and it helps you as a person to view things in a wider perspective and to know when to use your verbal and non-verbal communication. Leadership and critical thinking analysis skills. And I am saying this because most of the times in the care home, you are just there with your colleague and you are charging the shift on your own. There is no doctor, there is no matron, there is no clinical lead, there is, I mean, there is nobody there. You are the one leading the shift. You are the one telling people what to do. You are the one using your critical analysis skills. You can see a resident and you're like, I think this lady isn't well. Let me just do a set of observations. And by the time you do the set of observations, you will know that in fact, what she said is the truth. Okay. You know that um, if a person looks like this, they are almost going to die. When I started working in the care home, my carers used to tell me, the, the carers used to tell me that mm, this woman is going to die like tomorrow you get because they've been with them for long they know how to pick up clues that will tell you that this person is going to be this at this time so based on that you you critically you can think you can plan ahead and nothing takes you by surprise you also become an effective leader because most of the times you are charging the unit you are able to spot things that are not right you are able to spot the things that are right you are able to spot the things that need to be done and based on that you are able to think ahead you are able to reason ahead and you are able to make prompt decision at the right time the last but certainly not the least benefits that you gain from working in the care home is work and life balance i don't know how many times i have to say this you have work and life balance you have work and life balance because you are not working too much to make the money you are supposed to make or to make the money you would have made so let's say for instance you're in the nhs and you are working for like five days sometimes six days before you can make 
a reasonable 4k but you're in the care home and you pull a little bit of strength and you are getting the same 4k so financially you are not burdened you are not troubled you have much time to do your social activities if you're on holiday and want to travel you can travel i'm not saying if you're in the nhs you can't travel if you want to travel but because you're financially stable you have life outside of work so the rest of the days you are off duty you can decide let me just chill and relax and do a little bit of social and do a little bit of outings and catch up with family especially if you have family let's say a husband and a wife you have kids in the uk you can strategize you can come in between you know who is doing when at what time and i mean you are flexible you finish work and you feel like you haven't worked because you are working in the comfort of your home sort of because it's a home setting so you are not too much under duress. You are not too much under stress. You still have some amount of energy left in you to do the things that makes you happy. It's not everybody that the care home is for. And it's not everybody that the NHS is for. I know people in the NHS that have been banned five for more than 20 years. Same way I've known people in the care home that have been just registered nurses without progressing for more than 20 years. There are some people also that are progressing it all depends on you it all depends on your long-term goals it depends on your long-term plan personally my parents are elderly my dad is in his mid uh 70s my mom is in her mid 60s and so i have lived with them i have looked after them i enjoy their company so working in the care home makes me feel like i'm just looking after my parents and what i will do for my parents is what i will do for my residents do you get so i just love 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 working in geriatric care if you also feel like you want to work in geriatric care and you want a job that would have value for your time then working in the nesting home or in the care home is definitely an option that you should consider please if you think this video was helpful smash the like button for this video and give this video a big thumbs up also consider sharing this video onto your friends because that way youtube is able to promote my videos and my channel until we meet again in my next video guys is bye for now adios